Well, that was the view from Ramallah. Let's look now at the global reaction to the U.S. Embassy move and the latest violence in Gaza. In Tel Aviv, we have Arsen Ostrovsky. He's an international human rights lawyer and Middle East analyst. In Amman, Palestinian journalist and Middle East expert Dawood Kutab. And with me here in the studio is Selim Atalay. He's a Turkish journalist and commentator for 24 TV in Istanbul. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Arsen, let me start with you. Condemnation in its own right for the U.S. Embassy move from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. People have their opinions on that. A lot of people upset about that. But then in the aftermath, continuation of the violence in Gaza, the Israeli army killing unarmed protesters. Scores of them killed, a couple thousand injured. Isn't that condemnable? Israel will never apologize for taking whatever action necessary to defend our citizens, to defend our borders. We have to put this in context. This is no peaceful protest. This is a premeditated campaign of violence by the Hamas. Hamas is a terrorist organization sworn to Israel's destruction. Only a month ago, Yiyah Sanwa, the head of the Hamas, said we will tear down the border and we will tear out their hearts from their bodies. This is who Israel is dealing with. Now, today, we just found out from the Hamas themselves that 50 50 of the 62 of those killed in Gaza were members of the Hamas. So I think this ought to put, um, put to rest any sort of pretext that this was any kind of peaceful protest. This was a premeditated act of violence and Israel did what any sovereign nation would do in the circumstances. It took the steps necessary to defend our borders and to defend our citizens. Okay, so Arsene, I'm looking at all the different institutions that had condemned the killings over the past few days. The United Nations, Amnesty International, Save the Children, Human Rights Watch, even the United Kingdom and EU countries, usually allies of mm -hmm. Israel, saying this is wrong. You shouldn't be shooting at these protesters even if they are rushing the border. Turkey asking Eitan Nair, the ambassador, to leave the country. Are all of these institutions and countries being duped by Hamas? Or maybe do you have a problem? No, I would say actually many of them are being duped by the Hamas and falling for the Hamas spin. Um, many of them have said that these were innocent protesters and we know now for a fact that 50 of these were at least Hamas terrorists that were killed. So this was no peaceful protest. Um, unfortunately, much of the international community when it comes to Israel is very quick uh, to rush to condemn Israel for taking action to defend itself. But where is the international outrage against Hamas? Where is the outrage that Hamas is using children as human shields? Where is the outrage that Hamas are trying to infiltrate our borders? Can you imagine for a second what would have happened had their attempts to infiltrate been successful? There are three to 4,000 civilians living in the south of Israel. It would have been a catastrophe okay. had it succeeded. Okay. I so wish let's the get international it. community okay. could exercise and, but that's a hypothetical. when it comes to this that, That's certainly a hypothetical, and a lot of those people are too dead to defend themselves or to give us their intentions because they've been shot dead or they've been maimed, right? Selim, is sure. Turkey falling for Hamas spin... By well, deciding yeah, Hamas, to. Hamas uh, themselves um, declare it today. Okay, but I mean, we, we're talking about, you know, eating of livers and ripping out of hearts and stuff. I, I mean, I, I know you're an intelligent man. I, I doubt you feel that that might be literal from Yahya Sinwar. Nevertheless, let's go to Selim. Selim, is Turkey wrecking its ties with Israel because it's falling for Hamas spin? No, Turkish people just saw civilians getting shot regardless. Israeli snipers targeting the civilians with perfect clear shots and uh, they're pretty uh, good shots I have to admit and uh, we have seen uh, just very consistent massacre attempt by the Israelis. We have seen uh, press, uh, our colleagues getting targeted and uh, bullets ricocheting from their flak jackets. So um, no, it's unexplainable and undefendable. And so is it worth Turkey saying, listen, Israel, you don't get to be our friend anymore? Um, it's, 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 I think we are beyond that point. We are beyond the, the crisis point, And Turkey just says something needs to be done. And Turkey is uh, holding the summit this Friday with the Islamic conference countries mm -hmm. in Istanbul. So um, jo joint, joint reaction towards whatever is happening in, in, the, in Gaza and West Bank. Dawood Kutab, what do you make of the international reaction? Do the Palestinians have many friends? We spoke about Turkey's reaction. Do the Palestinians have many friends when it comes to the response to the embassy move and what's happening in Gaza? Well, I'm not sure whether it's important to have friends or not, but it's important to be on the right side of history. And 
Certainly, the Israelis are not on the right side of history because of their actions against uh, unarmed civilians, whether their heart is with Hamas or whether their heart is with Fatah. You know, Hamas won the majority of elections, so many people support Hamas. That doesn't mean that they are uh, worthy or they deserve to be killed because uh, a soldier with sniper uh, guns decides he's a judge, jury, and executioner, and he decides who gets to live and who gets to die. That's not how uh, humanity works. And what happened in Gaza is a crime of war. And anything less than that is not telling the truth. Now, spin, the only people who are doing the spin are the Israelis, mm -hmm. trying to say that the uh, soldiers were in self-protection. How many Israelis were injured, did you know? How many Israelis were killed? How many soldiers were injured? Zero. So if they were so much in danger, how come nobody was injured? Not a scratch has happened to the Israelis, yet we've had thousands of people injured and killed. So I think the Israelis uh, are on the wrong side of history. Some of the international community is standing up for, for justice. Some are being too political to stand up, and they're kind of being quiet. But it doesn't matter who stands up with the Palestinians. It matters where people stand in history. Arsen, are you on the wrong side of history? No, absolutely not. You know, I think the previous speaker um, spoke about uh, the lack of casualties on the Israeli side. And I would ask, would it make people feel better if there were more Israeli casualties, more Israeli deaths? Absolutely not. It was by the grace of our um, defence forces that managed to successfully stop the penetration of terrorists seeking to cross the border and commit acts of terror and violence. We saw for a fact that these were not innocent protesters. It doesn't matter how many times you say that. We saw them lobbing Molotov cocktails. We saw them uh, throwing IEDs. We saw them... Um, hurling stones. We saw them planting explosives. Uh, we saw them trying to break through the barrier. So once again, these were not innocent protesters. And Israel will do whatever action it must take in order to defend itself. And given the choice, we would rather the safety of our citizens than appeasing and uh, pleasing the international community. Can you say clearly and honestly that every death and every injury was justified? Any time there is a death, that is a tragedy. That is a horrible, horrible tragedy. But that is a sad consequence of war and violence, the situation we are in now. Israel targeted only and strictly those terrorists, those people causing harm. It is the Hamas who initiated this violence. It is the Hamas who brought innocent women and children. They bust them. They paid for them to attend these riots. They are the ones that put them in this horrible, horrible situation. War is a terrible thing. Innocent people die. But the responsibility lies squarely with the Hamas who, one, initiated this violence and, two, put the innocent people in harm's way. Dawood Kutab. Well, you know, the, there is a situation here where one side is powerful. Yes, the Israelis are powerful. They're drunk with power. And they are putting a siege on Gaza for 11 years. People in Gaza have uh, no, no electricity, four hours of electricity. They have no jobs. And the Israelis continue to have the siege. And people, you know, hope that there will be peace one day. And then they see the Israelis uh, celebrating, uh, bloating, boasting about the U.S. moving its embassy to Jerusalem. And they say, where is the peace? Where is the horizon? Where is the political uh, hope that we have? People see no hope. They see no horizon. They see no possibility of any peaceful process. So they, they're not happy to live anymore. This is the problem. You don't shoot against hopeless people. You try to understand them. You try to negotiate with them. You try to figure out what's happening. 70 years in which they have been waiting to return to their homes because the United Nations made the resolution saying Palestinians have a right to return. When Israel wanted to join the UN, they promised to respect the right of return. They promised to respect the partition plan, which said Jerusalem is a corpus separatum. It has to be separately resolved and managed. Yet Israel threw all that away, and they, you know, they're boasting because of their power, because their buddy Donald Trump is supporting them. Okay, fine, they're powerful, they're drunk with power, but that doesn't put them on right. the right side of history. Uh, Selim Atalay, Turkey driving this process, as you said, uh, yes. it's called this OIC meeting. What do you want to come out of it? Uh, well, the, primarily, does Israel want or will they allow an in, in, in independent investigation of this? beyond rhetoric and beyond the official lines and explanations, will there be an in investigation of this independently? We don't think so. So, number two, uh, 
The Islamic Conference meeting, similar meeting was held before the uh, U.S. Embassy moved, or right after the U.S. Embassy moved decision, and uh, it might be a repeat of that. But uh, of course, there's also a problem with the Muslim world when uh, Turkey wanted to send ambulance planes uh, to pick up some of the injured from Gaza. Israel and Egypt denied mm. landing rights. So, um, yes, right. there, well, there is well, a... Yeah, the, the Israelis and the Egyptians both enforcing the blockade on Gaza, something that isn't to be forgotten. Let me ask you, on the subject of religion, Dawood Qutab, the fact that a lot of U.S. evangelicals support this move and are in many ways part of Trump's base, pushing for this move of the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem as biblical prophecy. As a Palestinian Christian, how do you feel about that? Well, you know, I'm uh, a church-going Christian. I believe uh, in, in my faith, and my faith doesn't make God a real estate agent. God doesn't give away land to one people or another. God is a just God. God doesn't allow injustice, and I don't think anybody supporting what Israel is doing is supporting what God wants. I think, you know, God doesn't need the help of the evangelicals or anybody else to speed up his second coming, and you know, I'm really surprised that the Israeli Jews who are so excited about the evangelicals because what the evangelicals are talking about is the return of Jews so that they can be massacred in, in, in Palestine, Israel. So I, I disagree totally with the uh, interpretations of prophecy that the evangelicals are doing, and I think they are totally wrong by putting all their uh, trust and support to a right-wing, thrice divorced man who lies every day and who's not even uh, close to being a moral person. So there is nothing about this group that is religious. It's all political. Okay. Dawood Arsen and Selim, I thank you all for your time. Thank you very much for joining us here on the Newsmakers.